Uh, welcome everyone. Today is going to be the uh, second event of the book reflections. What is the book reflections? It is kind of a realization of a booklet, small booklet. I'm going to show you the booklet. So this is a small pocket booklet. The one, every month we uh, make one we realize one. And the advantage for people who like to learn English is that you can have it in your local language and English. So for example, I guess uh, Asma, your local language or native language is Arabic, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so we have, uh, we have a girl from Egypt, her name is Zainab, and she is helping making the Arabic version. So if you need the Arabic version of the booklets, we can provide you with it and the English version. So you can have both and you can read articles in both. So you can better compare the languages and better learn. For you, uh, Bezanur, Turkish, we, I couldn't find someone to help with the Turkish version. Maybe uh, when I find someone who can edit the booklet from English to Turkish, I will- Hey, I can, I can read in English also. Uh, of course, uh, that, that's, that's correct. But I was saying for a better comparison and for a better learning of English, it's good to have the booklet in your local language and in English so that you can see how expressions can change. You know, sometimes, uh, and this is because of the interference of L1 in, in English, you know, L1 is always the first foreign language. So there are some expressions we cannot translate uh, literally. There are some specific expressions when we do translation. So we are going to learn those expressions when we compare languages. This is just the comparative way, but if you wish uh, just having the English version, the English version is always, always posted on the website. And I am going to show you where to find the booklets on the website, the e-booklet, okay? Because we are uh, we are uh, kind of uh, designing e-booklets, though you can still print them and you can share them with your friends. So before all, I'm going to share my screen and show you where you can find the booklet. That's important I think, for you. So here, look, the, here is the homepage. I'm going back to the homepage to show you. This is the homepage. You access Live in Peace Now. When you access, you are going to have many tabs. So one of them is the subgroups. You go under subgroups like that. You click on that and it takes you to those subgroups. The one you are concerned with for the booklet is Writers Community Booklet Reflections Team. So you click on that again. And you are going to find by order, chronological order, the booklets. So the last one ha which has been realized is Grateful Visions. And you can find it in French and in Arabic and in, uh, and in English. Uh, so you see here we have three languages plus the Arabic one. I was sure it's, it's here. I will put it later. So you can find it in English, in French, in Spanish, in Arabic, I'm sure. And why not in Turkish soon? So let's take you to the English version here on designer to show you how the booklet looks like. You will have the e version. The e version means it's an uh, electr uh, electronic version. So you see, it's like this. As you flip the pages here, you are going to have the table of contents. So people who have participated, people to whom we give credit, then you are going to start reading the, uh, the articles like that. And at the end, I guess there should be credit for people who have participated editing the booklet. So uh, sometimes also we have people or painters or artists, they participate with their painting. So if you have, you are music uh, player or a painter, or you like drawing, it is also welcome uh, to participate with your art. It's not only writing, you can write and also uh, draw something if you wish. At the end, you are going to find an invitation, you are going to find contacts and you are going to find editors. 
So for the English version, the, these are the editors, along with Rosemary and Lena Willington and, and myself. And Gül and Beza Nur, if you, you are going to participate to uh, edit the Turkish version, your names will be uh, here uh, as editors. So this is how you can access the booklet. Now I go back and I start, we start speaking about the booklet for this month. So guys, for this month, the month of April, the theme or the uh, title is Abundance, all right? You know, we, for those who have been in some classes, the theme is Abundance. So uh, before all, I think what you need also, what would be helpful for you is to help you with structure of the paragraph, how to write a paragraph. Though we welcome, I mean, freestyle writing, we, uh, it's not academic writing, it's creative writing, we welcome any piece of writing, but if you wish, and because some people asked for uh, some help with the structure of the paragraph, after speaking about the theme, after inviting Rosemary, hi Rosemary, after inviting Rosemary to speak about the theme uh, and uh, how guide you and us to write about the theme, I'll be, Glad, uh, I'd be glad to sh share with you the structure of the paragraph. I have prepared a PDF, we can go through it, and together we will see how uh, to write a paragraph. So, um, Rosemary, again, hi, I hope you're doing well. Today, as you know, Rosemary, we are speaking about the previous booklets. I showed the participants where to find the booklets on the website, and uh, we need to guide them also uh, through the theme what they should write about, what is abundance, uh, what are the subtitles, or what, uh, what can we say to, uh, to the participants? Thank you, Rosemary. Hi. I opened the bracket, Rosemary. Bayzanur and another girl are from Turkey. Uh, we were speaking about the possibility of uh, making, in the future, the Turkish version of the booklet, and they okay. have offered help to edit the Turkish version. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I think together as a team, we will be helping each other to, uh, to make the Turkish version of the booklet. Okay, great. Um, yes, so abundance. Um, actually, it was very interesting. Um, um, there was somebody who isn't on here right now, who sent me a paragraph about abundance. And there was, <laughs> he said there were too many people at this event that he'd gone to, and that was abundance. And wow, when I think of abundance, I think of a lot of good stuff, not a lot of annoying stuff. But the dictionary definition actually doesn't have any value on a lot of whatever it is. So technically, um, that was correct. Um, he didn't say anything about you know what that meant to him. So uh, it wasn't clear to me. But... Um, Personally, when we chose the theme abundance, we were thinking about um, all the blessings that we find everywhere around us. And not about, I mean, usually we don't use the word abundance if it's stuff, a lot of stuff that's miserable or unhappy or painful. Um, we would use too much of. We would use uh, a surfeit, S-U-R-F-E-I-T, which means too much, more than we want. But that really isn't the meaning for abundance. So I don't know. Uh, it will be interesting to see if other people have taken the negative um, dictionary definition of abundance. 
Um, well, I have a couple of uh, paragraphs here from so some people. We can go through them and see what people came uh, of as definition or as experience of abundance. But I have one which is interesting and it is entitled Acts of Kindness. And this is a very positive uh, meaning for abundance. Right. Paragraphs. The ones I have today, the first one is from Victoria. Victoria is not here. Uh, Maybe she, uh, she will join later. And Victoria spoke about a river. And I think a picture uh, is worth thousands words. Oh, so yes. It's a beautiful picture. Yes. I think she took it herself in the place where she lives. And it's a beautiful river. I love rivers. I like walking by rivers. So this is so beautiful. The flow of the water. And she said, or the name of the river is... Uh, Kikare River, I think it's in, uh, in Austria. Uh, where Vitor is she? Vitoria lives in Brazil. Brazil, yeah, so it's in Brazil. So I, would, uh, I will go and read the paragraph. She said, it is born in Minas Gerais and runs into the Atlantic Ocean. The one who appreciates your beauty now may not know how abandoned you were before and how much history flows through your waters. Those waters that carried the last of slaves into Brazil. And before that, were opened to one of the worst bloodbaths between colonizers and indigenous of Espirito. So uh, I think uh, Victoria here uh, to express Abundance versus uh, colon colonialism. Abundance versus... Uh... Yeah. So that, I think, yeah, we really need to agree on our definition of abundance. Uh, yeah, uh, like you, Rosemary, I'd like to retain the positive meaning and aspect of abundance. Because otherwise we would speak about, it's like too much and so much. Yeah, like we say too much has a kind of a negative, but when we want to be positive, we say so much. So I think we need uh, to. Uh, what do you think? What do you think, people? What do you think, uh, Ben Zanur, about the meaning of abundance? The others. What do you think? What is abundance to you? Have you experienced it? If we apply this uh, concept, abundance on love, for example, it would be a, 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 it will have um, a positive meaning. Uh, love for children, for love for nature, for uh, for my husband, for for our family. Well, uh, it will have uh, a good uh, meaning. Uh, yeah. If we apply that uh, on uh, money, so. Uh, it sometimes they can direct a person to uh, a, a bad direction uh, to get money uh, and uh, mon in, mon in um, an illegal way. So uh, it will uh, cause a negative meaning. Right. Mm -hmm. It will lead to greed, greed for power, greed for uh, yeah. uh, money. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bezanur, you raised up your hand. Would you like to say something about that? Uh, yes. Uh, until today, I have never heard of the word abundance in English. Okay. So I looked at it on translate and made a little paragraph for it. Oh. If, if you fact. like, I can, I can sure. uh, read. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. In my culture... There is a belief that abundance comes from being together. For example, eating together. It also bonds with them, not wasting uh, and sharing with each other. Even when you don't know the person, if he sees the thing you eat, there is a right uh, called gözhak. It is I right translated in English. And it means if someone sees some food, they have the right to be shared with. The villager humans of Turkey are usually very generous. This means they like to share. When you go and 
ring the, ring the bell of a house in some specific village, they will welcome you cheerfully. There are many there are many examples in documentaries and movies of sharing domestic human. Oh, so uh, to That's some good. Right, for you, abundance is sharing, right? The uh, sharing things together, sharing food, sharing house. Yes. Yeah. And yes. that's, that's the kind of abundance that we had in mind. Yes. yes. Yes, exactly. This is the positive meaning of abundance. Can you send me your paragraph to my WhatsApp, please? I will edit it and add it to the book. Yes. Uh, I also have shared some uh, drawing I made uh, when oh. I was younger. Oh, it, great. It, I shared it because uh, there was written that uh, some sharing of art. I yeah. don't know if I did right. You did very right. Where where did you put them? Where did you post them? On the website or where? Uh, where Telegram. Are... Telegram. Oh, but you know. Oh, okay. I, but I am afraid if you post in the groups, uh, I can. I'm not sure I can catch them because as people send messages, your message will uh, go away. So can you share it to my personal Telegram? Yes, okay. Good, thank you. Thank you, great. I'd be delighted to add your yes. drawings. Uh, That's with wonderful. The, the booklet. So um, the second paragraph, Rosemary, would you like to go and read the second paragraph about acts of kindness? Sure. Um, deciding to spend part of a day engaged in random acts of kindness helps us to experience the metaphysical law of circulation, sometimes called the law of cause and effect. It's actually the law of flow, the one that says circulation is the essence of light and love. There are many ways in which this is expressed in everyday language. What goes around comes around, for example, or you get as you give. Indeed, giving and receiving are opposite poles of the same idea. You can't really give without being willing to receive. If you do try to do that, you're not truly giving. You're exercising your pride of being better than the people receiving. And it's much harder to persuade people to receive gratefully than to give as an exercise in feeling superior. True giving has to come from a humble realization that the recipient to whom we're giving is at least as worthy as we ourselves are, if not more so. And our willingness to receive help when we need it is the best test of whether we are truly giving or instead are exercising our egoic sense of, I'm better than you. In any case, the law of flow brings us much deep joy when we're truly aware in the flow of abundance, in oneness with the universe. Thank you so much, Rosemary. Yeah, so uh, this paragraph, I have shared it on the Telegram groups. We can reflect on it and we can come up with uh, other ideas or sub ideas or an experience of ours that, that we have experienced. It is in the Telegram groups. Abu is here. He is going to share it every day with you. Uh, I wish I can receive your paragraphs, that kind of any other type of, uh, of ideas that you have. Thank you, Rosemary. I think Am Amira is not here. Amira also wrote something, but it's not specific to abundance. She wrote about her experience with LP now. Uh, I will go and read for you what she wrote. She, she has been uh, in a couple of classes of Rosemary's metaphysical classes, and she feels grateful and thankful for being in this community. So she said, as a new member of LP Now, I thought that it'll be better if I share my small experience and thoughts about it. I actually heard about LP Now community by, by chance, thanks to a friend of mine in, Tur in Turkish, in Turkey. Uh, or in Turkish classes. I have attended only Dr. Rosemary's classes and thanks to the April uh, booklet. She has been, I think, in the first event of the booklet um, discussion and I discovered new sessions and got to know and see new members. Let me tell you, 
that hearing each one of you talking and sharing his idea, success and failure, adventure made my day and made me think of Sabrina's question, how do you deal with failure? Actually, hearing each one of your success and failure is kind of therapy because it made me think that it's not the end of the world. You are not alone or the only one who is having a bad experience, a bad day, negative vibes, or you can do it. Uh, yeah, as Sayed said, Sayed is a member also from Afghanistan and a teacher. You, are, you will have the chance to meet him, uh, I hope soon, if you are coming to different classes. Uh, this is to say, she said, one time I was nothing and I only thought that I can't do anything, but now I can do everything that I can't do. Uh, okay, so thank you for making this step and creating such an inspiring community that helps us to evaluate our failures and bad experiences to get to new beginnings and to do things in a better way because tomorrow is going to be a new day and a new opportunity. This is what she said, and I reflect and I say, of course, never give up, whatever the failure, whatever the difficulties, the barriers, um, there, is, or there should be a way. And this way, or this light, it's we, or us, it's, we are going to find a way. Uh, at the end of the tunnel, there, we, there should be light. So never give up. I think she, um, I don't know. Rosemary, do you, do you have I, a recall of Amira uh, in your last booklet reflection class? Uh, I don't. Mm -hmm. However, um, I think she, I like what she wrote. Uh, I think she has caught the, uh, the essence of what we're working to do. And that is to, you know, to support everyone in their desire to succeed and to do good things in the world. Absolutely. Thank you, Rosner. Bezanur, would you like to say something? Your hand is raised up. I forgot it, uh, but I send you the uh, drawing. Okay. And also my paragraph. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I will definitely put them in this booklet and I will send you a copy of the electronic booklet to your email once it is designed and ready to go. Um, okay, so Fahima, Nima, Ismail. Yeah, you are here. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, those people yesterday after my class, they are new. I welcome all of you. You are all welcome here. So now I think it's time to share with you some... Um, ideas and how the structure of the paragraph. And right after that, maybe some of you can share with us your experience of abundance. Now that you've got an idea about what is abundance, uh, maybe you can tell us in which way on, or a recent experience of yours. So for example, Ben, Zayu, ben Bezanur spoke, spoke about the Turkish culture, the sharing. Uh, sharing a meal, sharing, uh, sharing a moment, sharing love, welcoming. So, um, or before going to the structure of the paragraph, maybe we can listen to you and uh, to your experiences. Who would like to share with us something about abundance in your culture, as a personal, as a person, as a group, as a community? Who would like to share? You can raise your hands if you want to speak. <laughs> I will go myself right away to check to uh, open the paragraph, uh, the PDF for the structure, waiting for... I personally thought uh, when I first he heard the word, it was something bad, like uh, violence, because they sound very similar. Okay. It was like what? Like violence, I, because I, oh, my English ah, is not very well. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> well, we didn't expect that. So thank Me you for too. telling us. <laughs> thank you for telling us. And I hope that it's okay that we've now defined the meaning of the word that we're talking about, that we thought we were talking about. Yes. As I always suggest, if you want to have um, an idea about the theme, you know, 
now is um, the teaching uh, at LP now is theme based. That means that every month, spiritual guides, teachers gather and choose a theme based on what is happening in the world, based on the interest to the world, because we are an international community. And I always say, if you want to have an idea about the theme or more information, you can go to the calendar, you can go to the programs and uh, the sessions of spiritual guides, and you can look at the time. The titles can be inspiring. So we have a couple of titles on the calendar. I don't know if you had the chance to go and check that out, but if you go, you will have a, a better idea what is the theme uh, every month. Yes, Bezanu, would you like to say something? Uh, I wrote, I believe in education, there should be given more time to words and uh, things like this, because it is important for both personal uh, personality uh, and education. Absolutely, I agree. I agree with you. Education is very important. And in our community, we support, uh, we highly support education. And that's what we are going actually teaching. And, uh, and yes, and it's out of charge for now. So we wish you can enjoy this experience and learn as much as you can and share with us also. This is the aim uh, in our community. So here we go. This is a shared PDF with you about the paragraph. What is, first of all, a paragraph? I would like to listen to your definition. What is for you a paragraph? And if we compare a paragraph to an essay, what can we say? Have you ever written a paragraph? Do you have an idea? What is a paragraph? I would like to, uh, to share. As I am sharing, I can't see the, the, the hands. I wish I can, hold on a second. Rosemary, do you see any? Okay, so Asma, your hand is raised up. Would you like to say something? Yes, uh, the definition of uh, a paragraph is uh, a, a group of sentences related to each other uh, in uh, some kind of uh, coherence. Uh, the first sentence is called uh, a topic sentence. Uh, it tells us about uh, what the paragraph is going to talk about. Then uh, the, uh, the, body, uh, the body sentences, uh, uh, the next sentences is, are called the body sentences. Uh, uh, they support the main idea of uh, the first sentence uh, and give more details. And uh, finally, the last one is called uh, the, um, uh, the conclusion sentence. Uh, uh, we can tell our opinion uh, uh, in the last um, sentence uh, or uh, generalize uh, uh, what we uh, said above uh, in the whole paragraph. Yes, yes, that's exactly the essence of what is a paragraph. Thank you so much for sharing. As we go through the slides, we are going to just develop what you have said uh, in details. Thank you. So who would like to go and read this definition that is shared with you on my screen? Um, Dunya, Dunya Ali, could you, would you like to read? Yes, who are you? My name is Dunya, I'm from Somalia. Oh, that's you from yesterday, right, Dunia? You were in my English class. Yes, the past, the past time I came yeah. here. Yeah, never mind. It's okay. Could, could you read the definition? Could you read this definition that is displayed? Yes, but loudly, please. I can't. We can't hear you. Can you? Can you read loudly? Okay, I can read. A, 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 a paragraph. A paragraph is a group of colossal little sentences that develop a single idea or topic. Yes, thank you. A group of closely related sentences. So sentences that are related as uh, who was speaking, I think uh, Asma was speaking, she said coherence uh, and cohesion. So they are related in meaning and they are about the same idea or topic. This is in a paragraph. When it comes to an essay, it is something else. We can do essay next time. Next slide. Rosemary, would you like to add something about the definition of the paragraph? Rosemary, would you like to say something? 
Rosemary, are you here? Is Rosemary here? I think, I think she left. All right, the parts of a paragraph. We have a topic sentence, supporting sentences and concluding sentence as a- Right, a, so I wanted to talk about the supporting sentences, okay. which should need to be actual facts. They need to be either a quote, a quotation, or they need to be a narration, you telling about what you experienced that supports the topic sentence. That is why you have the opinion you expressed in the topic sentence. The supporting sentences need to be a story of some kind that happened. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. And the more your supporting sentences are fact-based or uh, uh, they are factual or they are quote, um, you are giving your paragraph more reliability and you are giving your paragraph more strength. And when we assess a paragraph as teachers, we always take this into consideration, the content. And uh, you can remember, for example, you have read um, so you have a favorite writer or you have read an article and at least at least when you don't remember the quote uh, exactly you can paraphrase or for example you don't remember the name of the writer you can state the name of the magazine or the name of the uh, of the journal article this is going to help you uh, make your paragraph worth it strength your paragraph and gaining more points this is for people who are really in academic writing. But on this level, as Rosemary said, it is good to read about uh, experiences also of yours or of someone uh, in your... Uh, in and, the, and there's a good reason for that. And that is that we ourselves believe our experiences. We don't believe other people's opinions. You know, you're not going to change anybody's mind unless you tell a story that really is striking. Yes. And a story can be a photograph or it can be a story or it can be a quotation, but it's gotta really have an emotional punch. Yes, yes, that's, that's, we always remember stories and, and, and and I open the bracket to say, uh, I don't know if you are, um, you like movies, when a movie is based on a true story, we always remember this movie and, and we speak about it because it's something that, as Rosemary said, strikes us. So, so yes, pay attention to that. Next slide is going to speak about the topic sentence. I think the topic sentence is something that everyone knows about. So who would like to go and read uh, what a topic sentence expresses? We have a hand raised. Uh, I don't know if Tasmia. Yes, that's... And, yeah. and Nagarjuna yeah. now has a hand raised too. Okay. So... Topic uh, sentence. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes. What is a topic sentence? Uh, the topic sentence expresses the main idea of the paragraph, what the paragraph is about. Uh, the topic sentence is almost always the first sentence. The topic sentence is usually the most general sentence in the paragraph. The topic sentence tip, uh, for the topic sentence tip is start with something simple and straightforward and then make it more sophisticated. Yes, so what I can say about the topic sentence is crucial because when I read uh, as, a, as a teacher who would like to assess a paragraph, when I read the topic sentence, uh, it is, I mean, how I, I know it is good or not. So is, does it give me a general idea about your paragraph or not? When I, I, I continue reading the paragraph, as I continue reading the paragraph, I need to find things I expected reading your topic sentence. If your topic sentence doesn't summarize what is going to be in your paragraph, this is uh, not really a good topic sentence. So pay attention for it not to be too general or too specific. It needs to be uh, to, to summarize what you are going to speak about uh, in your paragraph. So let's, for example, assume you are going to speak about the reasons behind um, the, the, 
the reasons behind something. So you state clearly that you are going in this paragraph, uh, I am intending or I am going to speak about the reasons uh, and you tell me what are uh, the reasons. And then in each, uh, for example, uh, supporting idea or supporting sentence, it is going to tackle one reason. So if you have three reasons, your supporting sentences are going to be each for one reason. So, um, I mean, this is how it should be. It should be the general idea of your paragraph. Rosemary, would you like to add something about the topic sentence? Yes, I put it in the chat. Okay. There are three things when you're writing a paragraph or a, an essay. First, you tell them what you're gonna tell them. And that's the topic sentence. Then you tell them the story. Those are the supporting sentences. And then you tell them what you told them and why. And that's the finishing, the ending sentence. Yes, exactly, exactly, that's it. So you introduce what you are going to speak about, then you speak about what you intend to speak about, and then you summarize what you have spoken about. Fahimas, thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Bezanur said, I believe in when writing a paragraph, it's important to keep going with the same uh, tense you started with. Oh, grammar, this is something else. I don't know if uh, grammar is included here. Grammar uh, depends on uh, which type of paragraph you are writing. Uh, we are going to speak about tenses uh, that are included in a paragraph uh, later in another class. Uh, and yes, thank you for speaking about the uh, this. And that's very true. You need to stay in the same tense. And what's even more challenging, you need to stay with the same person. So if you start out talking about I, you need to talk about I during the whole paragraph. If you start out talking about you or she, or they, you need to stay with the same point of view through the whole paragraph. And a lot of people find that hard. Yes, subject, yes. So example of a topic sentence, Canada is one of the best countries in the world to live in. So when you have this topic sentence as a topic sentence, what do you expect to have in your paragraph? Could you raise your hands? Canada is one of the best countries in the world to live in. What is your, what is going your paragraph to be about? Asma has her hand up. I expect to find the advantages of living in the city of Canada. Yes, thank you. Uh, for example, uh, it's a country of uh, industry, it's uh, full of uh, uh, nice scenery. Yeah. Um, people are very welcoming. Uh, people are friendly. Yes. Speaking about, uh, exactly. And this can be also stating one of your experience. So if uh, you have all this amount and, of- and, and we can talk about the, the tourist places. Uh, there, uh, there are sightseeing to visit in uh, Canada. It's a country of civilization, some museums, some uh, some places of attraction, uh, sightseeing. Mm -hmm. right. That's correct. And this, your supporting ideas can be one of your experiences. So have you ever been into Canada? Have you experienced this? Have you uh, worked there or connected to people there? So if you have done all of this, it is really uh, supporting because yourself have experienced these things you are speaking about. This is what we were talking about as an experience earlier. What is a supporting sentence? So who would like to go and read supporting sentence definition? Who would like to read supporting sentence definition? I read it. Go ahead, please. Uh, uh, supporting sentences. Uh, develop, explain, and support the main idea of the paragraph. Contain facts, examples, and details that relate to and say something about the topic of the paragraph. Explain why the main idea is true. Tip, try to write at least three supporting sentences per paragraph. Mm -hmm. What is the tip? 
So, uh, as Rosemary said, here as supporting idea, we need examples, we need details, we need experience, we need facts, we need, quote, we need quotes, uh, we need some our personal experience or someone else's experience uh, to support and to uh, to give credential to the uh, to the main idea. As a tip, try to write at least three supporting sentences per paragraph. It depends. Actually, here I, I can tell it depends uh, what is the length of your paragraph, what is your paragraph about. But yes, but it's good to have supporting ideas and, uh, and supporting uh, sentences. Uh, Rosemary, would you like to add something about supporting sentences? Yes. One of the biggest problems of writing a paragraph is that you start out with a topic sentence that has a whole bunch of possible uh, supporting sentence types. So a good paragraph is actually about one really simple, clear idea, and then two or three explaining sentences that tell a story. You know, yeah. if, it's, if it's about, uh, you know, the possible, the ways of being kind to other people, that's too big for one paragraph because you can't include all the ways in a paragraph. You have to narrow it down. You could say one important way of being kind is, and then tell a story about that one way and a, and a concluding sentence. Yes, absolutely. So this is what we were speaking about when uh, we define the topic sentence. It shouldn't be too general. Too gener general topic sentence is not good for a, a paragraph and neither for an essay. As Rosemary said, it's better to stick to one idea and then explain about it. Or even if you want to explain you want to speak about three ways how to be kind to people, you should state it in your topic sentence. In this paragraph, I am going to speak about, I mean, according to you, three most important uh, acts of kindness. This is in your, this is, you are stating that you are going to speak about three ones. That would be three paragraphs. It, or, um, that it could be three paragraphs th that makes an essay. Uh, I personally don't know where to put a, a blank space or where to start the second paragraph because it is hard for me. It is. It's challenging. Yes, absolutely. And basically, a paragraph should contain one story and one conclusion. And then the next paragraph should contain the next story. So it could be, there were, you know, three ways that you can um, get to the most interesting part of Quebec City, talking about Canada. Um, and, you know, each one can be about a different way to get to the top of the hill. But each paragraph would be a way. So basically, you choose, you start a new paragraph when you got a new story or a new example to share. Yes, and oh, yes, correct. And answering your question, uh, Bezanur, uh, how or when to start a new paragraph, if your essay, if you have decided because you are going to write a draft. So I said before in a topic sentence, uh, this is an essay because when you speak about more than one paragraph, it's an essay. In your topic uh, uh, or in your introductory paragraph, you have stated three words or three uh, introduced three paragraphs. So your paragraph is going to be about one idea. Each paragraph needs to be about one idea. If you have stated three ideas in your intro introductory paragraph, then you are going to stop writing the first paragraph when you with, uh, uh, with a sentence that summarizes the first idea or introduce the second idea. This is how we do. The last sentence in one paragraph either needs to summarize the first paragraph or and introduce the second one. And you can know according to what you have put 
in your introductory paragraph. For further explanation about an essay, I suggest we can, uh, we can do a lesson about this. Um, however, for this booklet reflection, uh, I mean the booklet, the write, writing shop of today, we need to write paragraphs. So not more than 150 words. Because, because the pages yes. are small. Yes, exactly. Look at the you size. Don't, you don't have room for more than one paragraph. Yes, but you can write more than one paragraph. I mean, if, if you are a writer, you like write like me when I start, as I said, <laughs> Rosemary, when I start writing, I cannot stop. And Rosemary also, she is a linguist and writer. And so she, you can just write, okay, different, more than one, but then um, divide them, split them and send me, uh, I mean, different paragraphs two three four but in a format of paragraph so i will add them uh, to to the booklet all under your name that's it uh, one example of supporting sentences is canada has an excellent health care system canada has a high standard of education canada cities are clean and efficient efficiently managed so this is why this is this work the topic sentence, why Canada is one of uh, the most interesting countries to live in, see? So uh, topics also supporting sentence needs to be clear, precise, and concise. And you can under a topic sentence, add examples, facts, and also quotes. <coughs> it has an excellent healthcare system. Have you ever been in a, a care uh, facility? Have your friend has your friend been in a care facility and she was happy with it so this is this experience can work your supporting sentence as an example this is how it should uh, be we move on to um, so this is supporting details supporting sentence under supporting sentence we have supporting details canada has an excellent healthcare system why all canadians have access to medical services as a reasonable price at a reasonable price. So um, th they have a good quality of medical facility or medical service, and it's not too much expensive. So um, this is working. The topic, sorry, the supporting sentence, Canada has an excellent healthcare system. The second detail is Canadian life expectancy is 81 years, almost three years higher than in the US. Another example. So here we are speaking about life expectancy, the, um, the age, the aver average age of a person, because the health care or medical service is good. So per a person lives longer, healthier. As they live healthier, they live longer. Any question up to here? Any question? And at the end, putting the evidence together. Could you go and read this? Could you go and read the paragraph? Who would like to read the paragraph? Me. Go Me. ahead. Go ahead. Welcome. Canada is one of the, of the best countries in the world to, to live in. Past, past, Canada has an excellent health care system. All Canadians have access to, make, to medical service at a responsible price. As a result, Canadian, Canadian life expect, expect, expectancy at a, at a pass is 18 year, 81 years, almost three years higher than US. Second, Canada has high stand of education. According to team, Canada is the only nation in which more than half of the population has college degrees, that Canada, Canada cities are clean and efficiently managed. Calgary was recently named as the cleanest city in the world. All right, thank you. Here, uh, it, uh, it tricks me to speak about something also. It is connectors. You know, in a paragraph, after you have put together your evidence, you, we need also uh, connectors for coherence. So you have here, for example, as a result, second, first, according to, and third. So these are important words or expressions. We connect 
sentences with. There are some of them for chronology and some of them for meaning. We can also do that if you have uh, for a further explanation of connectors in a paragraph or an essay. We can also do this uh, as we go in the, in the classes of the booklet next time. Thank you. We move on. What is, so the last one we are going to speak about is a concluding sentence. Who would like to go and read the, the concluding sentence meaning? Concluding sentence. Okay. Uh, the concluding sentence is the last sentence of the paragraph. Rest, restates the main idea of the paragraph. Indicates why the topic is important. May prepare the reader for the following paragraph. Thank you, Asmao. Uh, Rosemary, would you like to say something about the concluding sentence? Give an advice? Rosemary? I don't have any further statements uh, on that. Thank you, Rosemary. So what I can say about the concluding sentence, we have some techniques uh, to, uh, I mean, the basic one or the most simple one is just to uh, paraphrase the, the topic sentence or to summarize the whole paragraph, but in different words. So for example, if you have used active voice, you can use passive voice. Uh, if you have if you have any also further question about techniques such as summarizing and paraphrasing, we can also uh, you can text me or write me and we can uh, do uh, a lesson about those techniques. It's they, these are important techniques in writing, either for a paragraph or an essay. So uh, what does it do? It is the general conclusion of the paragraph. It is, it uh, restates or say the main idea in a different way. This is what is restating, saying in a different way. Um, and you can also, if you are in an essay, it can prepare you, the reader, for the following paragraph. So it, it, it becomes a transitional sentence. Be between the first paragraph the sec and the second one, or the second one and the third one. However, if you are writing a paragraph, only one, it is the general idea of the paragraph. Any questions about the concluding sentence? Any questions? Examples of concluding sentences. As a result, Canada is extremely desirable place to live in. For these reasons, Canada attracts a lot of immigrants. Canada is a great model for other countries to follow. So all of these or three of these can be good uh, concluding sentences for the paragraph we have read and uh, we saw the structure. As a result, for these reasons, so you see there is uh, the first uh, or in conclusion, as far as I am concerned, you can use some connectors uh, to, uh, to, to conclude your paragraph. And then other advice I can give is before writing, you need a draft. This is in your mind or your brain. That is all what uh, that that is always what I do. I try to uh, have a kind of an, an idea in my head before before writing. Then I write notes before starting. I I drop down some some notes, and then I, I write my first draft. And at the end, when you finish, review. So review the general structure, the length, the grammar, review the punctuation, review your paragraph. And as you are convinced that it, that's it, that's exactly what you wanted to mean and what you wanted to convey, then you can submit your paragraph. Rosemary, would you like to, end, to add something as we are uh, at the conclusion? I think the dog is still barking. So Rosemary is sparing. No. Uh, I'm fine. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for finding this and posting it and sharing it with us. You're welcome. So, uh, guys, this is all what you need. I hope to read your paragraph soon. Before ending this meeting, I'd like to go again on the website and show you where you can post your paragraphs and where you can find the previous booklets, the e-booklets that we have produced uh, before. <clears throat> This is the website. Can you see the website? Yes. All right. So uh, 
when you are on the main page. All right, I need to find a new tab. So or here is the book. Let me start showing the booklet and then I can show you on the website. This is the last booklet we have worked on and produced. It is called Grateful uh, Reflections, Grateful Visions, January 2021. As you flip up the pages, you are going to find the table of contents. These are all the titles of paragraphs and names of people they have participated and contributed to make this happen. And the number of page, so you can see which page is the paragraph. If a title attracts you, you can go directly to the page. Then as you flip up, you will find and uh, enjoy reading the paragraphs. This one was about gratitude and uh, so as you see, there are people from different parts in the world, from Iraq, from Turkey, from uh, Canada, from Afghanistan, uh, members at MPNO, as you know, from Algeria, are from Spain, are from different parts in the world, as it has an international aspect. At the end, I wanted also to show you the contact and to show you the credit. So here you can give, you can find the contacts, the website and the emails you can send your paragraphs to. So after write, read, writing, sorry, your paragraphs, you can send it to this email, sabrinatradia at gmail.com, that's my email, or to Rosemary, but I, uh, I suggest to send it to me because uh, maybe Rosemary, in all cases, Rosemary is going to edit along with me. So either email works, to Rosemary or to me. And then, as I said, whoever is going to participate in editing any version of the paragraph in any language, they are going to be given credit for that. So you will become editors at LP. Now you can put this on your LinkedIn and you can use it for your uh, career or your volunteering work uh, on LinkedIn. If you have any question, something I wanted to mention is you can share, you can download. See here, yeah. you can share it. If you click on that, you can share to social media to your, with your friends on Facebook, on, uh, on uh, Twitter, and you can also print it if you wish, as I did here. As you see, this is the printed version of the booklet. To the website now to show you where you can find this, uh, these booklets and how to read them. Wow, the that's a nice photograph. <laughs> On the website, yeah, thank you. On the website, there are subgroups. So make sure you go under subgroups tab. When you click on that, you will find different groups. One of them is the foreign languages department. That's for languages, but the one you may, be, uh, you may want to consult and uh, be in is writers community booklet reflections team. You click on that and you will find uh, the booklets. The last one being the grateful visions you can find different versions, English, French, Spanish, and Arabic, as you click on read more. The previous one was light and happiness. This was the December one. And before that, in August, we have produced the booklet Simplicity. You can expect soon the one of February to April. And as you are writing your paragraphs and sending them, it will be in the, in the booklet of May, that is abundance. Do you have any questions so far about this? Someone has written in the chat, I wish there were more time to hear their paragraphs from other friends. Yes, I am not sure what you mean by that, Bayezanur. You mean reading paragraphs? Didn't we read I every mean, um, that I thought, I think that people are a little busy and they or they are shy to uh, share what they think. They might be a little shy, right? They don't raise their hands as much as me and Abu and uh, Asma do. And you know what, Beza? We are so happy that you guys are raising your hands because that way we get to know you and you get to learn more and 
that's really what this is all about. So I hope that those who feel too shy will come again to other groups and will start to participate. As you'll you see, we don't bite, we don't chop off heads. We I appreciate. Thank you. Act actually try to welcome your uh, your contributions. And that's the best way to learn. So we're thrilled that all of you are here. And yes, Beza, we hope that we hear over time from everybody. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for your encouraging words, Rosemary. From a teacher's point of view, uh, English teacher, what I can say to everyone is, um, it will gain you confidence. I mean, we who cares about mistakes? This has been for a long time the barrier. This has been for a long time what is holding you up from being a freer speaker. In this community, how many are we? 10 people. Do you think anyone will judge you? No one is going to judge you because no one is. Actually, we are on all of us non-native speakers except for Rosemary and Rosemary herself is a non-native speaker of other languages so she definitely understand what is being non-speaker and we appreciate so much the efforts that a non-speaker is making and doing in order to make themselves understood and to communicate in a language that is that is theirs so go ahead and give yourself a chance to speak and to gain confidence. You will never learn speaking if you don't try out speaking. So next time I expect everyone to participate. And, uh, thank and, if, you. and if you did participate, we say in English in America, pat yourself on the back. <laughs> yes, that's an idea. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, maybe you can write it, Rosemary, for people who... Uh, it's an idiom and it's good to learn, um, I mean, uh, idioms because it's a uh, society connected social language. Uh, okay, guys, so here is my email. I shared with you my email. Okay, it's sabrinatridea at gmail.com. After this meeting, what I always suggest because later we are lazy, we don't have time, try to write some sentences now about abundance and send it to me right away. Uh, my WhatsApp number, okay, I'm going to share my WhatsApp number also. Hold on a second. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Sabrina. You're welcome, you're welcome. My WhatsApp number, take note please, uh, but you need also to put the Turkey. Uh, so it's plus 90, right? Plus 90, then you have 546. And then 826 and 2762. That's my WhatsApp. Oh, I only sent it to you, uh, Dunya. I need to send it to everyone. Copy. And so this is my WhatsApp and this is my email. Feel free to send me your paragraphs to my WhatsApp or to my email. I thank all of you. Uh, Rosemary, would you like to uh, end this meeting with your kind words? My kind words, thank you. I really am grateful for all your participation because our desire, our goal is to help people learn to speak English with more skill and more happily. And everything that you do, everything we do that contributes to that makes us happy. And I hope it makes you happy as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.